Hey guys, we are back again with another video in the Passive Crossover Designer series, and in this video we will be talking about phase. Now if you don't understand the concept of phase, you might want to check out Impulse Audio's video which talks all about phase, and that will be linked in the description and also at the end of the video. Now what we want to talk about is how to calculate phase in this program and how to uh, put that also into your crossover when you build it. Now we're going to need to do a couple things. First thing we're going to want to do is get our driver offset for the horizontal, vertical, and Z offset. Now this is where your drivers will be on your baffle. Make sure that you know where they're going to be or a good idea of where you want to place them because this will directly affect phase. Now you may notice that there's two woofers here. Well that's because we're doing an MTM configuration. And so I've offset both woofers as well as the tweeter. Now once you have those offset, and that offset is in meters, so once you have those offset, you're going to want to click on your graph. Now design your crossover as you would typically, and you're going to want to hit driver phase. Now when you hit this button, you're going to see a couple lines come up. You're going to see the orange line come up and the blue line come up. Now that shows where the drivers are in phase, and if you clicked on total phase, once again you're going to see the total phase there. Now that's actually showing that the speakers themselves are a little bit out of phase, okay? Um, we have uh, them at 2100 and 4000 respectively, and anything in there can really uh, have cancellation waves. And so if you pay attention to this, especially the 2100 to 400 and a little bit after, you're going to uh, notice it's not quite where it could be. It could be a little bit better. Now why is that the case? Well, there's a couple reasons why that's the case. Uh, first reason why that might be the case is we might need to change our offsets of our tweeter and woofer because, as we already talked about, that can directly affect phase. However, that's not, and, and we can do that, and that, that would change it, or would affect it at least. Uh, however, that's not always the reason why it's a problem. Part of the problem is the actual crossover that you designed. And in particular, I'm going to show you one of the uh, misconceptions of crossover design and the, the misconception is that the crossover needs to be crossed over at X Hertz so for example or X frequency so for example we need to cross over at 2500 Hertz and if we uh, and so that means both the tweeter and the high pass need to be crossed over at I'm sorry both the tweeter and the woofer need to be crossed over at 2500 Hertz well let's be honest that's not always the best case scenario However, that's what we did here. We crossed over the woofer at 2500 hertz and we crossed over the tweeter at 2500 hertz and we came up with this graph. Uh, does it look good? Yeah, it looks fine. There's nothing inherently wrong with this particular graph. Um, but they're not. it's not as good as it could be. So let's kind of show you what it would look like if we actually designed it in phase. And I want you to pay attention, especially to this middle part, as you're going to see that it really sound looks a lot better on the graph. And it's not that that looked terrible; it just it can look better, and your speaker can sound better, because you're not having that little cancellation that you're having going on. So, all right, there we go. We loaded it up, and you take a look at it, and look how much better that graph looks already. It's not to say that the other graph looked bad, it's just this looks much better, and you can see the orange and blue lines are now directly in phase, and if we click on our total phase, they all three pretty much line up perfectly. Now that's what you want to look for when you create a speaker. If you can create it like this with your offsets correctly, you're going to have a much better crossover design than without that. So what we want to do now that we have it in phase is show you why it's in phase. Now, we didn't mess with the offsets. There really was no reason. That's where I wanted the speakers and I didn't and I thought we could get it in phase without moving them and so I attempted to do that. And so what we did is we hooked up a third order parallel. So instead of changing so we went from a second order to a third order on the woofer and we also did one other thing we changed the crossover frequency on the tweeter to 4500 hertz. 
So once we did that, we were now able to get it in phase. And so here's some of the things you're going to want to try to get it in phase. Uh, check the steepness of your curve. Uh, second order, first order, third order, you know, fourth order. Uh, work on those. Uh, change the frequency at which they cross over. Okay. It does not have to be 2,500 and 2,500. Maybe 2,500 and 4,500 works, which it did on this one, worked the best. Once you start messing with those, you're going to start getting a much better graph like we got here. And you're going to start being able to create crossovers that are in phase and won't have those cancellation waves that uh, you might be getting otherwise. All right, guys, I hope that you understand phase a little bit better and now how to calculate it into your speakers and your crossover design. Now, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and we will be back with more videos shortly. Thanks. Counting double digit thousand seconds.